introduce you a little bit more but we'd love to hear a song or two more otra más dale otra 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 la historia de mi vida aquí vamos mi vida yo nunca he sido feliz las estrellas me iluminan al revés Pues ya pienso que si volviera a nacer, le daba una traición y gran sufrir. Por eso quisiera llorarme en el licor, para olvidar la traición de una mujer. Mientras viva no dejaré de beber, hasta que encuentre a la dicha y el amor. Hoy escribiré mi diario, hoy para papá, hoy 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 Se me alejan para ser 
of Words Wise Wednesdays and Wise Words Wednesdays and Woman Warrior Wednesdays through our stay at home time. We want to welcome you and thank everybody for joining us tonight. We are so excited to have Gris book release of Cuatlique Girl, the book, the one and only. Uh, everybody has that book. Um, place it up. You're going to find out how to get it in just a bit if you already haven't seen our, our post on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. All is the streaming, and we're streaming live on YouTube right now. Let people know we gave you that time of DJ Malavida to not only, um, you know, get your cumbia on, but also to let people know that you are here, to let other people know to join. We have our live chat happening right now in the in YouTube. In YouTube, let us know where you're coming from. Also, if you're listening and you saw a post or you're seeing a post on uh, Facebook or wherever it might be streaming live, let us know what city you're coming from, whether it's across the globe, across the country, what rancho, colonia, neighborhood, barrio, let us know and we'd be glad um, to connect with you. So again, thank you so much, uh, DJ Malavida. DJ Malavida is Andale, it's Musica del Pueblo, para el Pueblo, born in Guanajuato, Mexico, and raised in the South Side. Hey, uh, ooh, ooh, south Side, <laughs> oh, oh. The South Side of Chicago. Noemi That's is queer, hey. multidisciplinary artist who expresses her creativity through her migrant Jota experience. Her latest oh. endeavor has been heavily influenced by the dynamic all girl, all vinyl collective, Chulita Vinyl Club. Spinning mambo, electro cumbia, hip hop, and house drums that bring back memories from childhood. You just heard, and we have the blessing yes. and the cumbia party of DJ Malavida. Thank yes. You so much. Hola, hola a todos. No. Yeah, for tuning in. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, Gris. Felicidades on your book. Can't wait to read Gracias. it. Mujeres Thank de Maíz. 
Saludos. Thank you for having me and having this platform for other authors. Um, it's my pleasure. Hope you enjoy yourselves and hope you find some comfort uh, in this chaotic time that we're living in. Definitely. Yes. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just to do a, a introduction again. We're here for Guadalupe Girls book release and kickback party for Gris Munoz. Uh, she'll be reading in just a bit. And we also have great other authors, including Rios de la Luz, Irene Lara Silva, and of course, a little bit of Q&A with myself and Greece. And if you have questions, you can put them in the chat most likely later so we can see them a little bit, but we'll do our best to kind of keep up with that and really connect with you in that way. So to begin, um, you know, Greece and I know each other. Um, aside from social media, we met and connected through Mujeres de Maíz, which is our YouTube channel right now, but not at that time. It was through social media. And we also connected through ceremony and the spirit ways. So um, we're going to go ahead and open up this this event, other than with cumbias, we also have the nice duality of cumbias and cantos. Cantos indígenas yeah. in a, in a, just to opening it up in that way, in a good way. And that's what we know. And so we wanted to bring that to you. So uh, we want to thank Creator for another day. We want to thank the ancestors of our land here in Los Angeles and in the land of El Paso and across the communities that you come from, wherever you come from, that you are in a good way and we're taking care of ourselves, our families, and our communities. And of course, Madre Tierra, Padre Sol, and um, all of our communities across and gods and dioses across. So we want to give thanks to those ancestors. And in this way, sing just one or two um, rounds of the song um, and we want to connect it and sing um, Don Nansin. And I know if so, if you, if you know it, um, this is not an In La Catch song. Usually we only sing our own songs, but I wanted to share a song that many people knew. And actually I'm wearing the Cuatlicue shirt today on purpose for Cuatlicue girl and just deciding also connected with Madre Tierra. So this is a Don Nansin song. So it's hard to kind of sing with that with everybody uh, we tried it before where we all sing and it like moves around, but you can feel free, welcome to do it. We'll see how it works on YouTube and through live. So. Wait, Gracias. So we just wanted to start off in that way of this song honoring Mother Earth, Mother Tierra, Tonansin, in that beautiful way and that beautiful connection of, of our community. So um, in the chat on YouTube or if you post on our Facebook, we hope that everybody is having a, a good time, connecting in a good way, reposting this so more people can see and that you've purchased hopefully already. Quatlique Girl and you'll find out in just a bit how to do that. So we wanted to just um, also make sure that everybody knows who's on because you just see these faces and it might say their names under, but if you can at least just say, hi, I am, and then we'll go into the rest of the program. So uh, Rios, do you want to just say hi? Hi, everyone. I'm Rios. Hello. Irene. Hello. Hello, everybody. So happy to be here. Moni, Monica. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited for us to get started. Thank you so much for the music. I was over here like dancing, like, yes. <laughs> and also on the YouTube live chat, a lot of people were um, saying if they get quieren otra, que where's the playlist at, so they can look back at it after. Um, so I'm really excited. And a lot of folks um, here, obviously, uh, to celebrate 
um, the, the book. And so it's really cute because like everyone's writing y'all like chingonas status, muchas felicidades, Gris, all kinds of uh, really sweet affirmations. So I'm so excited to be sharing space with you all and um, to celebrate you and your um, book. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And Gris, want to say a little hello to everybody. I know you're sharing later and we'll talk a lot more. I know a lot of people logged on. Yes, for I do. I do want to say hello and just listening, just listening to you all and listening to all of you here. Um, I am absolutely honored. And I even started tearing up a little bit just listening to you, Moni. I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, I want to thank Felicia and Mujeres de Maiz for always supporting Mujeres. I want to thank uh, Rios de la Luz for being my hermana, especially as a, a, a woman from the border and here in El Paso and a brown queer woman uh, uh, creating a revolution within herself, within her writing. And Rios, you know, I just adore you. I adore, I adore your work. And so it's also um, awesome. Rios wrote the blurb. Uh, for the back cover of What Liquid Girl. So I, I owe you a copy. And uh, I also want to thank Irene Lara Silva, maestra, mentor, um, friend. And um, it just means so much that you're here, Irene. It, it just really does. I am just so excited to have you um, speaking and your work is so powerful. And I'm going to cry. It's really powerful to me. Um, I actually made one of Irene's uh, poems, my epigraph in Guadalupe Girl, and her work means a lot to me and to a lot of mujeres, so thank you. And um, I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight, and I, I know that we're going to get started. Um, I'm just so excited, so honored. I love everybody. I'm just really, really happy tonight, and so thank you, because it has been a rough time, uh, but this is definitely um, a bright spot, so thank you. Awesome. So I actually, I realized I had pinned the video when you all went and did like a roll call. So one more time, because everybody just saw me <laughs> during that time. So if y'all can like say one more time, Rios, and where you're, what's your name and the city you're coming from or area or indigenous nation, whatever it is, the area. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Rios and I'm here in El Paso, Texas. Perfect. Irene, por favor. And I'm Irene, and I'm coming in from Austin. And uh, Malavida, if you could go ahead and share, please. Sure. Hola, como están todos? Um, um, Noemi, I go by Malavida. Um, yo nací en la Siendita, Guanajuato. I grew up in the south side of Chicago, and right now I'm currently residing in Ohlone Territory, which is also known as Oakland, California. Uh -huh. Thank you, and Moni. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Moni, and I am with MDM, so an MDM organizer, and I'm super, super excited uh, to be sharing virtual space with all of you and everyone else that's watching us from all over the place. I saw folks sharing, so that's really incredible to see the impact, um, not only here, right, in LA, not only here in California, but there's folks joining us from all over the place. So I just wanted to share that with you. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we're putting the website grismunoz.com in the uh, for information and for contact for bookings, etc. for online readings at this time or future in person readings. Um, and you can contact them there. And then for the website uh, for the buy the book is a new big cartel. And we'll share that link in just a bit. So um, we are excited again. This is the book release uh, launch party as well as the kickback for Gris Munoz's book, Guatlique Girl. And we're gonna go ahead and begin the rest of our program and have Irene Lara Silva share. To introduce Irene, she is the author of three poetry collections. They include uh, Furia, um, Blood Sugar Canto and Quicali House of Song, an e chap book, Enduring Asaguares, as well as a short story collection, Flesh to the Bone, which won the Premio at Silan. She and the poet Dan Vera are the co editors of Animan, Poets Writing in the Anzalduin Borderlands, a collection of poetry and essays. 
Irene is the recipient of a 2017 NALAC fund for the arts grant. Woo woo. We love NALAC. And the re final recipient of the Alfredo Cisneros del Moral Award, the fiction finalist of Arrojos 2013 Gift of Freedom Award, and the 2008 recipient of the Gloria Ansaldua Milagro Award. Beautiful and amazing. Irene is currently working on her first novel, Nasi and her second collection of short stories, The Light of Your Body. Please give a warm welcome to Irene Lara Silva, por favor. I am so happy to be here tonight, Gris, um, and to be part of this event. I wanted to say about your book before I started reading my work is that I was sitting with the book again today and I thought, what is the most striking about this book about Guadalupe Girl? is that sometimes you read something and you, you recognize a part of it or you feel like part of it speaks to who you are. But this book felt like it was written specifically for me. And that's something that is so rare to find in a book. And it's something that I love about both your Rios and Gris, that y'all write with no apology and with no desire to culturally translate yourselves. You write with no need to write to a white gaze or to an American mainstream. And I love that about your work. I love how truthful that is. So I just wanted to tell you that. So I'm gonna start off by reading a poem that, uh, uh, that Greece requested. That's the one that's, uh, that the epigraph for, uh, for uh, the book comes from. And this is called Song of Burning. It's from Gali. There you go. A Song of Burning. I never forget the ash, a thousand, thousand black wings in the sky, black against a blue, so blue, so wide, so bright. I'd see the ash and know they were setting fire to the sugarcane fields before harvest, burning away leaves and straw and tops, clearing and cleaning, causing the creatures to flee, the scorpions, the snakes, the bees, rendering it safe for the workers to collect the precious stalks. What else do we burn? with this purpose, this desire to shed the unnecessary, to concentrate one single intent to collect the sweet. What else do we burn, knowing we are not destroying, not erasing, only doing away with the shaft and husk of us, the mean, the petty, the unjust. Have you never heard the fire singing, singing as if every second hurt, as if every note was pulled from deep within and the leap from emotion to sound left a wound? ragged and bleeding, mm. but give me that song. It is a song I need to stay true. The fire has come, the fire has sung. I am straight blackened stalks of cane now, bare to the eyes, bare to the hands, only the sweet of me left. And I obey mm. my gods, speak when they bid me, speak, set myself on fire when they say it is time for harvest. Mm. Some sweet is the collected essence of flowers. Some sweet grows long and green swaying with the wind under the sun until it is brought forth from flame and ash. Mm. And I am ash, always the ash in the sky. And I am the sky and the light landing on the black of my ash. And when my gods bid me rise again, I rise again. And I will rise again whenever they bid me until there is nothing left with which to rise. Damn. Damn. So that one's for you, Gris. And I think there's enough time um, to read a couple more little pieces. I So yes. I, I'm enjoying reading from the new manuscript of <laughs> Short Stories. So I'm gonna share with yeah. you a couple little flash fictions. So this one is called Marzipan, uh, inspired by a dream. And for those of you all that don't know Marzipan, it's that um, like the candy that they usually mold like little fruits with and they make them look very realistic. You know, they make little, you know, apples and little manzanitas and duraznos. Um, traditionally made out of, uh, what is it? Almond paste, rose water and honey. So like I said, this was from a dream. Marzipan. I dream you laid out before me, flesh colored, woman shaped. I bite into you and you do not bleed. Candy sweet. Your exact feet, your precise toes, your crimson nail polish, the small scar on your left ankle, your strong calves, your knees. I lean over you and catch the scent of almonds, honey, rose water. I fill my mouth with your left thigh. There is no blood, only sweetness. 
I trace the lines of your hips. You look warm, look alive, but my hands touch coolness, touch the slight stickiness of sugary things. It had to have been a master artist to mold your rounded abdomen, the soft curves of you, the slight folds of you. These are your breasts, both upturned and not completely firm, obedient to gravity. A master artist to have painted your stretch marks and the blue pathways of veins. I look closer and see that your long hair is not hair, but finely spun dark sugar. If I'm not careful, it'll break. I hold you in my arms. My warmth warms you. The scent of you rises. What would it take to melt this candied you? Your eyes are wide open. I lick the rosy tint of your cheeks. Will I tell you I dreamt of you this way? If I speak my secrets now, will you know them? If I hold your sugared body, does it make me less faithful to you? And what if candied you touched me with hands that were more tender, with hands that were more eloquent than yours? What if candied you uttered what you never voice? And if I eat your sugared face, will you cease to be you? And what is it I want most? to take you within me or to erase myself. I think that if you dreamt of me this way, you wouldn't be as possessed as I am with this desire to devour. I bury my face in the space between your neck and your shoulder and hear the crackling and snapping of your sugared hair. Oh, Irene. <laughs> That's actually the first time I get to read that. So I'm happy to do that tonight. Ooh. I think I have time for one more money. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. So this is another flash fiction from the new collection. And it was inspired actually by a science article that I read. Um, I had always believed that horses were brought to the Americas by the Spanish. It turns out that horses originated in the Americas, traveled to Europe and Asia and then actually it went extinct here and then were brought back by the Spanish. But they've done genetic studies and actually the horses, like the, the Mustangs, wild horses, are genetically indistinguishable from the original horses that were here before. So there are these interesting arguments about whether wild horses should be considered a native species or not. And I just love this because, you know, we as, as Chicanx people are dealing with our indigeneity and how we negotiate that. Um, and so, so that science article and then a painting I saw it led to this. In this dream of blue horses, there are no roads, only undulating land in every direction, only bodies beautiful and blue and lit by the moon, only the slight coolness that night brings after the heat of the day, only our sister wind, our brother wind that both blow against us and carry us along. We were not born here. But our mothers, mothers, mothers called this land their home. The bones of our ancestors do not live in the first few feet of earth under our hooves. But listen close, listen close, and you can hear the thundering of their hooves, their bones a few feet deeper, only a few feet deeper. Our mothers, mothers, mothers called this land their land, their home. And the land says, oh, my long lost, long legged children. And we, the long lost, long legged children, whimper, mother, mother mother to the earth. In this dream of blue horses, we are returned to the land of our ancestors. We are wild again, but then did we ever lose our wildness? We were only waiting and our children born free do not remember captivity. They would call us feral, but we were never truly domesticated. We only bided our time. None of us had to remember freedom or our stories or the structures of our families. The knowledge was never taken from us. We were only prisoners to the bit and the bridle and the saddle and the spur, but our spirits were never anything but free. And even then we dreamed and we dreamed and we ran and we ran in this dream of blue horses, in this dream that is our living, our breathing, our being, we run as one, all our bodies, all our hooves, all our hearts, all our flared nostrils, all the stretch and coil of the meat and muscle of us made one, made a river under the light of the rising moon and the waning sun. This was always our land. This was always our freedom. This was always our strength. We thunder, we thunder, we thunder. Gracias. Woo! 
that was amazing. <laughs> I was like, that is so incredible. Thank you so, so much for sharing, Irene. Uh, those pieces were incredible. And in on YouTube, you're getting all the love as well. Um, yes, woo, so powerful. Um, doing that frontline work in our hood, um, but looking for new books for the community library. Um, folks joining us from, like I said, Texas, all over um, Irene, um, con little corazoncitos and everything. So thank you so, so much. Okay, so up next we have, we're gonna be, y'all said otra, otra, right? So, <laughs> so we're gonna um, go back to our DJ who's providing us with some cumbia, so DJ Mala Vida. And Noemi is a queer multidisciplinary artist who expresses her creativity through her migrant Jota experience. Spinning mambo, electro cumbia, hip hop, and house gems that bring back memories from childhood. A1, because I was like over here when you were playing, I was dancing and I was remembering, I was like, oh, <laughs> mi mamá limpiando y yo. <laughs> Con la, yeah, con la escoba y toda la cosa. So let's get it, um, let's get it dancing. Se vale, como dijo Mala, DJ Mala Vida, se, se vale bailar. So dance again en la, en la casita for a few, for, for a little break. Yes, and not only se vale bailar, we're going to have like a YouTube or a, we have to see everybody at least moving, shaking your hand, all of us a little bit, a little bit. We're going to have a few minutes, about three, you know, a couple songs. If you haven't let people know to join our YouTube stream or to check it out on Facebook, do that now. This is your time for all our readers, our poets, or anybody watching right now to repost it at least once somewhere else. Tag Mujeres Mayes, tag Gris Munoz, tag our, our listeners and our performers and our and the, go get the book right now. Let's see how many we are sell right now at Gris Munoz. The link is in the YouTube and we've been linking it all around, around and snap and tagging everybody. So let's go and on to DJ Mala Vida. I always wanted to do that. Hear me like, out there, what's up? Hey, se vale vacilar. Hey, hey. To dance a little bit, celebrate. <laughs> Yeah. 
for Palapla. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Vida for those amazing tunes. Um, ojalá que you all found yourself dancing in your sala o de donde nos, de donde nos están este, joining. <laughs> Puro Spanglish. Um, but I'm really, really honored and excited uh, to, uh, well, one, give it up for DJ Mala Vida. What? I'm like, I can't wait for the next little yeah. Um, I'm from Maloney Territory. Okay. A -A -A. I love her. Yes. And you're over there, hello, dancing. I'm like, say, I wish you like, I felt your energy like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Thank you so, so much. And I, we are going to be transitioning to um, listen to another um, piece, some pieces from uh, Rios de la Luz, and I'll introduce you and then you can share with us. So Rios de la Luz is a queer Chicana and Chapina living in El Paso. She is the author of the short story collection, The Pulse Between Dimensions and the Desert, and the novela Itza. Her work has been featured in Volume 1, Brooklyn, Luna Luna Magazine, Corp Corporeal Clamor, Broadly, Wohi Lit, and Santa Sucia. So if you all can help and join me to welcome Rios de la, de la Luz. Um, yes! Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be in this space and see all your beautiful faces. Thank you so much, Gris. It's an honor to read with you and Irene, of course. Um, yeah, I just appreciate y'all. So thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm going to be reading from my novella, Itza. And I'll just be reading um, three short pieces. <clears throat> Burial. Abuela's favorite color was lemon yellow because it made her brown skin illuminate. She compared her skin to the gleaming wings of dragonflies and the shimmering ruby throats of hummingbirds. Mija, look at me glow. The sun kisses our skin, Mija. Look at the veins in my arms and my hands. They pop out with electricity because I am so full of history and chisme. In her lemon yellow pantsuit and deep brown, beautiful skin, she went to church and sat in the front row so the priest could see just how bright she dressed for her God. After church, Abuela sipped on café con leche and tongued her teeth. Pues, los hombres discuss God in front of a crowd, but mujeres, we talk to God all day and we see God in everything, mija. Even, even with a devout tongue, Abuela made her living day-to-day -day rules clear. Abuela forbade the entire family from wearing shades of yellow, even into her death. For her funeral, we wore red. Red because it represented the blood pulsating inside of our bodies. Red because her name was Ruby. Red to remind us she isn't fully gone. She passed down her precious stories and history into our blood. Now she is an ancestor meant to hear us when we shout or whisper our prayers. But spread rumors about me if you want. Just don't forget me, mija. Abuela lived with us during her final years. Her recliner was light purple and velvet comfort. I used to spell my name out on the sides of it while she watched her shows about haunted houses. After she passed, I could feel her presence in the empty living room when I walked by the recliner at night. I wanted to rock back and forth in her lap, but she was more than a ghost. She was veins of lightning. She was white swirling clouds. She was pollen sticking to the legs of honeybees. I never sat in her chair after her death, just in case she was resting there. I didn't want to make her uncomfortable. The recliner? It felt like a throne when I was a kid. Your butt melted into the cushion. It smelled like roses and Avon lotion. 
I was an astronaut in her purple chair. I counted down from three, two, one, blast off. Then I farted into the cushion or burped out my lungs. Abuela used to peel me out of her recliner and laugh at my flatulence. But this is what our bodies do, mija. We expel smells and noises. It's just your body talking to you, mija. Drenched. Rain poured out of the dark clouds. Araceli held her arms out, opened her mouth, and stuck out her tongue. She called the sky the ultimate hydration station. She called out to Abuela, and in a matter of seconds, in bare feet and a lemon yellow tracksuit, Abuela came out to feel the water on her face. Marisol followed with her shaved head. Her head was an homage to Abuelita during the year of tenacious hair. The water trickled off her round head and landed on the shoulder pads of her tangerine dress. Araceli was obsessed with any pigmentation of blue. She wore matching sky blue shorts and a shirt with patterned white clouds dispersed on the cotton. Her teal socks were drenched and squished in between her toes. She loved the weight of wet clothes. She loved feeling heavier than gravity meant to make her. She loved flailing her body around and stumbling over it. Araceli watched her sister and grandma embrace each other under the rain, then let go of each other and start dancing. Marisol spun around and sang words she was learning to use in Farsi. They were curse words and they were savory words. She was so proud to start taking on a third language. Abuela did the robot and howled out a laugh. Araceli and Marisol followed her moves, then let loose with the cackling that was sitting in their guts. When Araceli thinks back to this memory, the three of them are frozen in time with their arms and chests pointing toward the sky. Their tongues are out for the sake of hydration. The rain continues to fall until the town floods, the three of them stuck in time underwater, only to emerge to the surface with gills on the sides of their necks. Something in the air. Rumors about Abuela filled the air after she died. I told the neighbors that Abuela was born in the tongue of a blue whale, and she rose to the shore with translucent jellyfish under a full moon. One crisp morning, as I picked myself up from kneeling in front of Abuela's grave, a woman in red asked me if I knew about my past lives. I said no. She asked me if I knew the truth about Abuela. I told her I wasn't sure. The woman gave me a corn husk stuffed with mint, rose petals, and tiny pink seashells. She smiled at me and told me a story I wasn't sure I wanted to believe. She told me, Abuela used to sacrifice men in the name of protecting the town. Abuela painted red across her eyes, her breasts, and up and down her legs. She collected ghost peppers, fish bones, rotting fruit, and hair clogged in tub drains. She minced garlic and onions and gathered the salt left on top of graves. She scribbled the names of the people who were forbidden from entering the town onto pitch black paper. She poured vinegar into an open gold-lipped oyster shell and mixed her collected ingredients. She added rose thorns and burr from sticker grass. She stuffed the notes into the mixture and then poured the concoction into a corn husk. She buried the bulging creation in the cemetery we stood on. Abuela could sniff out liars. She smelled the tops of our heads in moments of doubt and called us out on our fibs. She was sensitive to the violence of men. She recognized the look a man gave a woman when he believed he owned her. She knew the shakiness in a man's voice when he craved a quicker tongue. She muttered under her breath when doors slammed. This power structure was violent in the eyes of Abuela and these men deserved to be in the ground. During the ritual, Abuela made the men drink white vinegar. She made them shave off all their hair, their eyebrows, their chest, their toes. She dug into the men with a small knife until she removed one part of their body, an eyeball, a thumb, an ear. She asked them to explain why they thought they deserved to live. She stuffed the body parts inside curved seashells and asked the men if they could swim. When was the first time you learned how to swim? When was the first time you realized you could drown a woman because of your own fragility? At the very beginning, Abuela selected men who were abusive to their partners. She could smell the fear on a woman or a child, a specific sour sweat from the man. After years of practice, she started kidnapping local politicians who insisted we build more borders, who insisted we build more walls. Abuela lived in a border town her entire life. 
She witnessed deportations. She saw families torn apart. She understood the people who felt like shadows in moments of fear. She dehumanized the political leaders who dehumanized her neighbors. She placed a black pillowcase over their faces and dragged them to the Gulf of Mexico. She collected newspapers with their faces on the covers. She read quotes from their speeches aloud and asked the politicians what they meant. What do you mean when you call someone illegal? What do you mean when you call brown children a threat? Abuela had a super strength she claimed came from being born in the ocean. She picked each man up by the throat. She slammed them into the sand and told them to have an honest moment with their fear. She wrapped them in American flags and told them to ask their colonizing ancestors to save them. She told them to ask for the person they loved the most because that person would never appear before them again. Okay, and that's all I have. Thank you. And I realize Woo! I'm like in the darkness here. <laughs> Thank you. I can't even. You can't. <laughs> I, I can't like, even. No, no palabras. <laughs> Rios, you are just, you, there's no, there's no work like yours. There is nobody doing what you do anywhere. It's just, we need it. We, we need it. It's so vibrant and colorful and powerful and hella strong and just, whoo, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Damn. Uh, Rios de la Luz. You can find uh, more information. We've linked on Facebook as much as possible on Instagram, wherever we can find their handles or their website. You can, of course, Google them and you can find their, their WordPress websites, their websites or their social media. So please check it out. In just a bit, we're going to do something like this. If people want to say, I'm Felicia from Mujeres de Maiz. I'm in East LA or general area of East LA. And in a little bit, we can put your handles because we're putting it as much as, so if you have some time while somebody else is reading, um, go ahead and put that like I just did. This is the, I don't know if, I don't think it's backwards, but um, let me unpin it in case those are, y'all can see the websites, yes? All right. So make sure that you see the big cartel is for the book. We heard that Chica a Centro Cultural in San Bernardino just bought four for their library and for their young people there. And we're hearing here and there in our chat room that more people are purchasing them. One of our Mujeres de Maiz, Megan, who's actually going live on Instagram with this too. She's taking a video of our video. <laughs> and so we're live on Instagram too, as much as they'll let us in there. And um, she just purchased one too. So let us know if you got one. Um, we're gonna, in just a bit, all those who are performing, if you can make one of these, sometimes it's good so they can see your full name or your website if you have a second and how, like if your, you know, if your handle's like some interesting, cool thing, very creative, very poetic, but nobody knows how to spell it or knows, <laughs> that's the way to let us know. So thank you again, Rios. We're gonna go to DJ Mala Vida and just a few um, songs so that we can get back into our full feature of Gris Munoz. Can we hear you, DJ Mala Vida? We are so excited to have everybody again. Baila, baila. And we are whenever you want. <laughs>
about to you're like oh no i'm just i'm just loving it i'm just bien enamoradota de todo si sí, i was loving it thank you again for having me gris de nuevo felicidades on your book can't wait to read it mujeres de maíz thank you all for hosting this beautiful event of course thank you so much 
Thank you, DJ Malavida. So if you're trying to find DJ Malavida on Instagram, they have actually not at DJ Malavida. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's backwards, I think. I didn't know I was doing it backwards to us. Or maybe it'll be fine on YouTube. But any tip jar, can you put it again? Sí, ahí te va. Tip jar is like Mala, Mala Vida. That is, I'm reading it backwards. <laughs> and then their Instagram is, can you read that? Cucucumbia. <laughs> so you have to make sure to write, write that correctly and um, make sure that you're, you know, you do that right. It's double A at the end, according to this DJ Cucucumbia or no, DJ Mala Vida at the Cucucumbia. Okay, yep. so make sure you check that out. Also, the Instagram for Rios de la Luz is Rios de la Luz. And Irene, I don't believe you have one, do you? I'm sorry, I don't have what? An Instagram? No. Instagram. Yeah. I'm confused, I know I'm confused by too much social media. So no, no Instagram. <laughs> Irene, you need an Instagram, Irene. It's, so, Irene. it's so much work. It's so much work yeah. to learn something new. No I'm barely getting, I'm estoy acostumbrando a Zoom. Like that's my, my lesson this year. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I feel you on that. And of course, Gris Munoz. Gris is the Instagram for Gris Munoz. And we're about. Yes. To... What we oh, Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No worries. So we're about to, I have the Cuatlicue on this t-shirt I bought in Mexico. You know, it's hard to find these Cuatlicue and Viosa teas and items. So we are bringing out the Vaquera cowgirl status for my El Paso Chuco town sister, Gris Munoz. We're about to introduce this amazing mujer. Um, uh, sister, friend, person who has done so much. Gris Munoz is a frontera poet a performer, an essayist and fiction writer. She is the author of What Liquid Girl. You can get that at uh, the two YouTube, our links all say it there. Make sure to get it, grismunoz.com and the big cartel is how to get the book. Um, she has been, her work has been published in the Rumpus, Bitch Media, Queen Mobs Tea House, and will be featured in the upcoming Third Woman Press inaugural anthology, as well as her very first published piece, uh, published with the Mujeres de Maiz zine. Gris is currently commissioned to write the biography of the acclaimed LA, Los Angeles, East LA, Boyle Heights artist, Fa uh, Fabian Devora, Fabian Devora, and she lives in El Paso, Texas. Let's give a beautiful and big round of applause to Gris Munoz, the author of the new release, What <laughs> <Girl. laughs> Thank you so much. I am so honored to be here. Am I on the main? Am yes. I on the main window? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to thank everyone for being here. I'm so excited. Um, this is a big deal. This is a big night for me. I really thought that I was going to have to cancel everything. I know that this is a difficult time and um, I want to just acknowledge um, what we're all going through as a community um, and within, within ourselves, um, with our families, um, alone and alongside everyone else as they've been saying. Um, this is the book, um, it's called Quat Liquid Girl and it's taken me 12 years to write uh, the earliest poem that's in here, um, I believe I wrote in 2006. So I was just a, I was just a Chavilla uh, when I started writing this book and uh, I've kept at it for many years. And um, I just wanna thank Felicia Montes and the Mujeres de My East who actually published my very first poem. And that's my, my story of how I came across or how I became a Mujer de My East. Uh, I was on MySpace and I sent Felicia Montes a message. I sent her one of my poems. I just wanted her to read it. I, I came across her and she was just incredible and her profile, she was wearing her vaquera hat 
And uh, I just trusted her with my work. I had no idea she was part of Mujeres de Maiz. And I just sent her my poem because um, at that time, that's just, I just felt excited when anybody, anybody would read it, read it one of my pieces. And uh, Mujeres de Maiz actually published my first poem. And that was a long time ago. And we've had an incredible journey as friends, as collaborators, as sisters. And so I just wanna give a big shout out to Mujeres de Maiz. And I wanna thank everyone that is here tonight. I wanna thank DJ Malavida. You are incredible, Mujer. I am completely enamored with your work. And so I'm so happy that you're here. Um, Moni, and this is actually my first time meeting you, but I'm loving your energy and I just really want to be friends uh, with you. And I saw you dancing with your little, your doggy, and I just thought this mujer is one of my own um, and the outfit and everything. I'm feeling it. Um, and I just want to thank Rios. Rios, again, thank you so much. You are incredible. Um, you have uh, been there for me. We've done workshops together. Uh, we perform together and I really feel that our work kind of goes along the same lines and we kind of just go together really well. Uh, and so thank you. And Irene, La Maestra, uh, thank you so much um, just for everything and all the beautiful energy you bring in. Um, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight um, from home and I feel excited that you're all here. I'd like to give a quick land acknowledgement where I'm currently I'm in El Paso and I'm about a mile away from Juarez. I'm very, very close to Juarez right now. I can see it from my backyard. Um, and though I don't believe in borders, I just wanna give a land acknowledgement to the original inhabitants of these lands. Um, so Manso, Apache, uh, Tigua, the Raramuri tribes. Um, these are the, and, and other tribes, these are the original inhabitants of this land. Um, so we always recognize that wherever we are, we're on um, occupied land. Um, so I want to give an acknowledgement to these ancestors and I want to give an acknowledgement to all of your ancestors, all of your guides, all of your angels, everyone that you carry, every single person who is watching, who is reading, you are protected by your ancestors. And I want to give an acknowledgement to all of you and everyone that you carry with you. Um, and I'd like to make a quick call for prayers right now during this time. Um, we're gonna do a, um, later on in your, in, in your time, whenever you get a chance, make sure that you put out a prayer to protect our elders, to protect our families, to protect native communities right now um, that are going through this nightmare with um, COVID. And so please, when you get a chance in your private time, send a prayer to these communities send a prayer to our elders to protect your elders, your parents and the elders of our communities and those with um, compromised systems. And now I'm gonna get started with uh, a reading from Guadalupe Girl. I'm gonna read some poems, not so much the short stories, um, but the short stories really add a whole other aspect to the book. And I'm very excited to share a piece that is also bilingual. The book is in Spanish and English and um, like, Irene spoke about, um, I chose not to translate my work. So some of the pieces are in Spanish, some of them are in English. And, um, and that's just because I'd like to really make that nuance that sometimes I need to write a piece in Spanish. And so the pieces kind of decide what language I'm going to, to write in. Um, I'd also like to give a special thanks to Flower Song Press uh, for believing in this book. I'd like to say that my book has the great distinction of being rejected by every Chicano press. Uh, just kidding. Um, but no, really, uh, I had sent it to Luis Rodriguez at Tia Chuchas when it wasn't ready. And he actually wrote to me a handwritten letter. Um, he was very uh, sad that he couldn't publish it. It just wasn't time. It was actually missing over half of the stories that are now in the book. So now the book is ready. Flower Song book saw something in it. And so I'm just super excited. Thank you so much, Ed, Edward and Liliana over at Flower Song. And I wanna give a, a special thanks to my parents, uh, Antonio and Concepcion Munoz, 
and my daughter, Belen Sochicoa Tinajero, um, who are my biggest fans and my biggest support. And um, I just want to thank everyone that has been my comadre at some time, everyone that has sat at my table and had cafes with me, whether or not we are still friends. Thank you so much for that energy you gave me. And I think of you fondly. And I feel like this book also has a piece of you in it. Um, so I just want to thank um, all the friends that I'm no longer friends with, but that I still send mad love to and um, tell them that I miss them. And I want to thank them for their energy. Um, and that sounds crazy. I don't think I didn't think I was going to say something like that. Um, so I'm ready to begin. Um, and so I just want to talk a little bit about um, this piece. It's called Costco. Um, any story that's in the book actually happened. So these are all true stories, except for the last one at the end. It's a it's a uh, dystopian story. So obviously, but everything is true. Um, these are all real experiences that I had. Um, thank you. Costco. My mom loves Costco now. She used to love Sam's Club. Her eyes widen and get giddy once she's there. Griselda. Busca me un carrito. I'll lose her at some point after spending a few seconds too long sorting through a pile of oversized coffee tins and then eventually find her two aisles over carrying a sack of elbow macaroni under one arm and a bucket of Tide under the other. This visit wasn't any different. We waded through the sample area where the crowd of shoppers had thickened. It was because a skinny, blonde, spiky-haired employee was about to begin a knife presentation. He looked about 19 or 20 and kept checking his watch nervously. I watched him adjust his belt a couple of times and eventually step up onto a little platform surrounded by rows of tuna cans and pickles. He tried to muster up enough energy to look enthusiastic. Quédate aquí. Voy a buscar spinach. No te muevas, a veces regalan cuchillos. Okay, mom. I stood next to a señora holding a rotisserie chicken and together we watched the kid set up his knife kit. Tiene buenos cuchillos, she whispered. Si, sí, I whispered back. It was a whole thing now. The area around the kid had been taken up. We all looked up and waited. My grandfather had been the butcher in Guadalupe Bravo, Chihuahua a tiny speck of town somewhere on the border, not too far from Juarez. Many times, I thought I had it in me to be a butcher too. The kid was a couple of minutes into his presentation now. So far, no giveaways. He'd gone through the paring, peeling, and boning knives impressively, chopping potatoes, julianning carrots, then slicing bone, cardboard, aluminum. It wasn't boring. Some people walked away, but the senora and I stayed on, along with several others. By now, there was a new senor in our group. He was wearing a blue t-shirt and a cap that read bimbo across the front. He was holding a paper cocktail plate and a few buffalo wings on it, with a few buffalo wings on it. Next up was a half inch steel bar. The guy showed the crowd the serrated utility knife and began sawing away, began sawing away. It was working, and after a few seconds, he stopped and presented the indentation the knife had made on the steel. He asked if there were any buyers, and everyone stayed silent, watching him, hoping he'd up the ante. Suddenly, Bimbo Cap said, Mejor que los vaya a vender en Juarez, a los carteles. The crowd tittered. Si, sí, verdad? Responded another voice from behind me. Así cortan pescuesos rapidín. Someone said he should sell them door to door over there. I don't know why, but in that moment, we laughed even harder. We lost it when he pulled out the butcher knife. I saw the senora pull a little crushed up Kleenex out of her pocket and dab the corners of her eyes, her face distorted. The blonde kid looked up at everyone, looked confused for a moment, and then giggled, assuming we were just really enjoying his presentation. 
Guadalupe Bravo, Chihuahua, for Irene. Nunca puedo volver al camposanto donde sepultaron a mis abuelos. Tuvieron que cerrarlo después de tanta matanza. Avaliaban a familias enteras que llegaban en luto. Cuando era niña, íbamos cada segundo de noviembre a limpiarles los, sus tumbas. Yo corría recogiendo cualquier florecilla de plástico para repartirlas a las que no tenía ninguna. Recuerdo que mi padre sacaba galones de agua para limpiar los letreros. Con cuidado, emparejaban los túmulos con el asadón y dejaban dos ramos de flores de plástico porque así, así más resistirían los elementos. Después, comprábamos cocas en vidrio y dulces de camote. Yo me quitaba las sandalias y me acostaba en la tierra como si entre las manos de Dios. This um this piece means a lot to me. Um and um I don't know I, I will say what it is um what it's about in English. Uh this is about a little town, the little speck of town that I talk about in um Costco, Guadalupe Bravo, Chihuahua, where my grandpa was the butcher and my uncle was the butcher and my mom's twin brother. Um, and my mom's sister, my aunt, still live there to this day in this town that is now ravaged. It is a complete war zone. Uh, there is no police there. There is no politician. There is nothing left. Um, this little town that I remember visiting every Sunday and walking to the corner store and buying the cocas and trading them in and some señora walking up to me and saying, Y de quién eres tú? Y quién eres tú? Oh, pues yo soy la hija de Conchita. All of this town, it's all gone. I can I can't go there. It's not that far away. It's in this place called El Valle de Juárez that is outside of Juárez and it is even more, if you can imagine, more dangerous than Juárez. And I worry about them all the time. Um and so this this work um it's just really powerful to me that I, I can't go to the cemetery. Um, they were shooting people that that went to go to the funeral, so they, they had to close the cemetery. And uh, and so I just have these memories of, of laying there and feeling like I was protected uh, by creator, by creator's hands. Um, uh, okay. Um, and now I want to um, kind of read something else. <laughs> um, so this collection has a lot going on. As you can see, there's like strong pieces. Um, and then there's light pieces, there's funny pieces, um, little short pieces, little shorty pieces. Um, and it's just basically all the stuff that's been coming out of me for the past 12 years, heavily curated, because a lot of it was really not that great. But this is the good stuff. Um, and it also um, explains just being a queer woman, so I'm an openly bisexual woman um, here, born and raised in El Paso on the border. And this is a very, uh, it's a very difficult place to be um, openly queer. Um, and in a way, almost openly bisexual um, is very controversial still. Um, and so um, this book also goes into my acceptance of my own queerness or my own bisexuality and what that means to me. And so it has all these little snippets of these beautiful people, these um, people that I got to spend time with that I wrote poems about. My own bisexuality. Um, so I'd like to read a piece. About a special mujer and it's called Claudia. We never knew when it was morning, legs entwined. I would watch her standing at the stove to make espresso from an antique tin. A sculptor, one night, she hung glass bottles from the ceiling with twine. They would clink with the wind. I would watch her standing at the stove to make espresso from an antique tin. It had been her grandmother's, she said. The bottles would clink with the wind 
in the basement apartment with no furniture except for that four poster bed. It had been her grandmother's, she had said. A sculptor, one night, she hung glass bottles from the ceiling with twine in the basement apartment with no <laughs> furniture except for that four poster bed. We never knew when it was morning, legs entwined. And it goes along with another poem um, called Tiny Earthquakes. In Mexico City, we ran down echoing silent gray cobblestone streets, cramped booths, steamed coffee, served in white china cups, placed on blue flowered plates. Surrounded by bookshelves, we slept close to the ground, the curve of your back, breath loud. I wanted to reach my arm around your waist, ha clumsy hands, timid restraint, chipped white china trembling, spilled heat on flowered plates. Um, and now I'm going to give you like a time to breathe. It's amazing so far. We're putting your website there. We're putting people's websites. You know, you're doing an amazing job and we're so excited to have you have the book release right here. You know, there's a lot of energy. And so I just wanted to like have you breathe in this experience. Say hello to everybody. You're unpinned so people can see you. We can see all the rest of the artists and poets. Can you put your book up? I just want to see it up close and personal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felicia. And I know there is a lot going on. There is a lot of energy that is constantly coming out of this book and constantly coming out of me. And um, this book really kind of explains what's going on inside of a woman on the border, a queer Chicana or a, a queer Latina, Latinx, uh, mujer um, that is... I'm first generation. And so there's a lot of expectations that were placed on me. Um, because of that, I'm the youngest and the only daughter of three boys. Um, so um, it has been a difficult process for me to become free. Um, and so, um, and I wanna thank you for that, uh, Felicia, if you uh, notice that I'm getting a little too intense, just lighten me up. So I'm not this in intense all the time. Um, oh, but this poem is intense. intense. I just wanted, like, I know as a put, like, you're like, whoa, I have to be on, perform, perform. And if so, if you wanted to take it, like, exactly, like, drink some water and tea, like, be able to breathe, because you're like, performing. So I just wanted that time. Oh, ando, ando bien prendida. <laughs> ando All right. Sigue <laughs> <laughs> So this piece is called Spec. And I, I say that this piece is a performance poem. Um, and it's probably my longest piece um, that I'm gonna be reading. Um, and there's a lot going on in this piece too. Spec, a performance poem. We are particles, less than rain. The rain drizzles and runs and then evaporates and travels again. But where do we run? When you pull aside the thick curtain and the sunlight shoots out and you see them by the thousands twirling and suspended in the light and you wonder if they were there all along but live in a darkness or a haze that makes them invisible. Is that what we are? Dust that settles somewhere at the bottom of pockets or under couches, irrelevant places waiting for just that flash of sun to be seen. The justice I seek is immeasurable. It's better I'm a speck upside down and twirling. What could I possibly ask from the sun besides a moment of visibility before the curtain gets shut again because grandma complained. They twirl in uniform the way we all do, seek nothing but measured movements and the gratification of motion from the whoosh and chaotic dance when someone makes the Bed. It's the snap of the sheet that gives us life, that pushes us up and out, but always back to the backwards dance that leads to the wanting again. I'm a speck. 
I'm a speck despising the dust, the dust of heat and car exhaust in your face and tired buses, the meow of desert poverty and always the grimy film on my black patent leather shoes, the walking ungrateful ungrateful nasty girl who is not humble not humble in her speckness she wants to wear the dress and when the sheet snaps back she pushes toward the window hoping for a gust of wind and a new dance or a new settle besides the bottom of nobody's pocket i don't want to kneel born bent if you love me you'd let me stand i can't sit still in the pew i'm sliding and banging the soles of my shoes against the dark smoky wood grain it echoes and says i am here i want to wear the dress be holy and painted like mary and the statues the flickering candles and plastic flowers my aunt and i are standing at the altar the plastic bunches we leave are dyed blue and unnatural the flowers of the poor and forgotten cemeteries you only visit once a year to water the headstone mary mary she looks at me and tells me to run. She wants to go too, unfurl her hands, leave this tomb. Mary wants something new. The sacred is stale here and people's prayers like folded notes and wants all of their lives hanging off of their dusty mouths. Mary sighs at the sight of all of them all piled up like unopened letters and at the faceless children, too many to bathe and not enough water. <clears throat> the wax is burning the candles into little rivers and Mary is holding my hand, our fingers clasped and wet. She smells like frankincense and dried urine. Somebody open the window. And now Mary and I are running away together. Nails on her feet, the wood breaks. <coughs> and our thin arms releasing veils, raging against the blue sky. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, that one got me. I love that piece. Woo! Applausos all around. Give, let's give it up. You can unmute yourself for all of the because we can't hear you if you're applausoing. Or you could do the snap. I just unmuted a lot of you. I just snapped or clapped. Or you could do like, you know, the Zoom reactions, the applause. <laughs> Can you do it? Let's give some love and energy to Gris Munoz, author of the new book, Guatlique Girl. Guatlique okay. Girl. What's up? All right. <laughs> okay, so now I'm ready to take it down. Um, and I'm going to just finish off with a couple of softer poems. Um, this one, um, it's a little piece. It's a little one-page um, shorty to... It's called La Chingona. And um, you'll see what this one's all about um, in regard to being a chingona. La chingona. But I don't want to chingarte through generations of relationship archetypes appearing and reappearing in our personal lives and ancestral histories. I feel like, like we've seen enough to know what abuse is, how it permeates and is cyclical. There's violence in the word. In Spanish, chingar means to fuck or be fucked, maybe even to rape. Mexicanos have been called hijos de la chingada. Rape insists on control, on power. To chingarte would be to humiliate you. And I don't wanna do that. I am a chingona that doesn't wanna chingar anyone. I want to nurture, be nurtured. 
I want you to lift your chin. One of my greatest fears is having been born with bad instincts. I've made so many decisions I've later regretted. In the wild, if you're a jaguar that can't hunt or run, you eventually die. As a deer, if you can't outrun the jaguar, igual. I am a woman who is sometimes not so sure I will survive. I've always had a sort of frailty about me, a vulnerability, like maybe I can't hunt or maybe I won't outrun the jaguar. As a child, I would regularly get my feelings hurt and sob onto my mother's shoulder. The trauma would seep out of me. It always has. <clears throat> Scars. The grandmothers say that when a cut isn't healed right, it becomes infected. And even if there's later a scar, the skin that lines it will always be frail. Mejor abrir la cortada otra vez y limpiarla bien, darle poquito aire para que esta vez si se cierre y se sane. That's where it begins, the ceremonial path. When you see your heart, body, and mind scars and decide that you're brave enough to look at them, maybe pry them open again and clean them with mint and lavender so you heal correctly. Some of those scars happened when you were a baby. Some while you were in your mother's womb and some of them even before that. Rocio <clears throat> Siwakoat. <clears throat> and those of you that have uh, been taught under abuelas, um, you know that their discipline is hard and true and they knock you on your ass, but you learn and it humbles you. And this was a real, a real lesson I received from an abuela. Rocio Siwakoat. Dime, ¿a qué le temes tanto? The abuela asked, her dark pupils focused on the parts of myself I could not bear to witness. Es que tengo miedo de que me voy a morir. I choked out, sobbing. No me quiero morir. Muchacha, todos nos morimos, pero entiende, no es tu tiempo. Si te ibas a morir, ya te hubieras muerto. Tantos cuartos oscuros donde te metiste. Mentiras. No temes a la muerte. Temes vivir. And she was right. And so many of us are. And at some times we, we try to destroy ourselves. Um, so that we don't have to enter that healing journey, so that we don't have to fulfill our destinies and we will hurt ourselves and our paths um, because we're afraid, we're just afraid. And maybe death seems like it would be easier than reaching your destiny, but it's not, it's harder because you'd have to come back and then you still have to reach your destiny anyway. So it's better to just stay here and stay alive and finish this path. Um, and I just have two, two last pieces to, to close out with, um, one in Spanish, a real shorty too, um, called Fui tu nopal. Te dije una vez que tomo poca agua, que tomo poca agua, te dije una vez, me contestaste, <laughs> más de eso, me juraste. Que amabas a mi tierra asoleada y te acostaste a mis pies. Y ahora me dices que amas las raíces mojadas de una flor que llamas clave. Si las flores prefieres, nomás recuerda que son pronto a la muerte. Año por año yo las he visto nacer, crecer. Y con el frío caer. Pero esta guerrera de espinas ni el fuego la mueve. 
fuego quemando mi frente, no palito fuerte, nunca podría ser flor nomás para tenerte, vete, déjame sola con mi desierto y nunca regreses. Tú y yo sabemos que ni raíces tienes. <coughs> You know what? I will always love a good fuck you poem. Yes. I will. I will. <sighs> and this is my last piece for the night. Um, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I know we're running a little bit over. Um, but, you know, we've got, we, we're, we're home, right? We've got a little bit of extra time. Um, and this is the last piece. It's called Love Letter to Michoacan. And it's a really special poem to me. I just wanted to explain a little bit about this piece. This piece is about um, a lover I had um, that is to leave to go to Mexico and work with the comunidades and the autodefensas. And so he would be in El Paso or he'd be in the US and then he would leave or he was in Oaxaca and sometimes he would leave and I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, and it was a very dangerous time um, for this person. And, um, and so that's when I wrote this poem. Love letter to Michoacan. Where do you keep your gun? Never says he loves me, but he loves the revolution. My body brown and crossed. Urgent hours, unfolding maps and timing planes. The roses in the blue glass vase sit coral and tilted. Held up by the prayers of your mother and of all of the women who know your anxious face, lit up in fleeting moments, crowded airports, bus stops, their shoals draped around shoulders, bent on tiptoes for a last touch of your militant mouth. I waited then as I do now. Awake, a warrior waits for the right conditions. My silence, a siren blaring, switching. We are living on borrowed time and marrow. He's packing duffel bags with equipment and ammunition. I'm pacing, don't know what language would reach him. Michoacan, te vas donde los cuerpos cuelgan de los árboles sagrados. Por las noches me duelen los huesos, despierto de espanto. Navaja de muelles, solo tú me sacas lo malo. Mi amor respaldado, soldada, el que te casa, lo incendio, lo mato. Michoacán, solo tú entiendes mi amor ominoso, my ominous love. Iztaccíhuatl, volcanic, fluorescent gray ash, I swallow things up and turn them to stone, whole cities, bridges and roads. Michoacan, I erupt all alone when you pack up and go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's hear those aplausos. I know, take a drink of that poetry. Damn. My rose water. Oh, oh, can you spray us? <laughs> we need to cool down after some of that. Michoacan. Is this from Berenice? Yes, that is Berenice. Is this? Espejos Apothecary Dog. Oh, I'm, spraying. I'm spraying the air with Berenice's special Agua Florida. Yes, I'm spraying everybody. Thank you. Very Thank you so much. much. Aplausos and beauty. Thank you so much woo, woo, woo. what can i say i'm a i'm a passionate lady i'm a passionate guerrera nah. <laughs> i wouldn't have ever guessed at all let's see so we have for those in our chat we have question and answers coming up next with gris muñoz we're gonna play Maybe Mala Vida, can we play like one song to get us going there to give them some time to question and answer? Can you do that? I know I'm giving you like on point. Can now. <laughs> and um, whenever you're ready, it'll it's already unmuted, so it could just play a little bit. Um, so again, we are 
celebrating the book release of Gris Munoz, Cuatlicue Girl, Cuatlicue Girl, the book. Um, can you hold it up for us, uh, por favor, Gris, the book? Or anybody who has that book, Gris Munoz is Cuatlicue Girl, available at Flower Song Press or um, published by, you can get it at grismunoz.bigcartel.com or also grismunoz.com for readings, bookings, and information about her work. Gris Munoz representing Chuco Town, El Paso, Texas, Califa, no, not Califa, Aslan, Aslan, Anawa. Right, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> And many other places. We're so excited. DJ Malavida, can you give us a song so we can like Gracias, DJ Malavida. Instagram, Cucu Cumbia. Two A's at the end. What's up? <laughs> Representing from all kinds of places, but right now in the Lonely Territory, Indigenous Lonely Terry, Oak Town, Oakland. We are in East LA area. We are streaming also with gente from Texas, El Chuco, also um, City Terrace, and a lot of people on the YouTube live stream coming from all over the country. Put your questions there now. We do see some questions already, and we'll be asking um, them in just a bit. Thank you so much, DJ Malavida. So uh, we are about to do a little bit of Q&A um, with Gris Munoz. So we're gonna go ahead and start and then um, see, we also have a few from the, from the audience. We'll go back and forth um, with some questions. So one of the questions we were thinking of, what was, I know there's probably many, but what is one of your inspirations or just one of your inspirations? I know you shared a little bit already, but um, I just definitely go ahead. I just definitely um and I, and actually this was on my on my thank you list and my inspiration is definitely the mujeres the black and brown women um of color that have written before me um 
so many, so many works by black and brown women, feminist women, womanist women that have inspired me. And so definitely I like to think that I am speaking along, along that genre of just mujerista uh, theology. Um, and so, so definitely the, the writers that came before it because they helped us, they helped us so much. They, they, they crushed up their bones and fed them to us. And so many of us have been liberated through their work. So I just want to thank the, the Abuela Chicana writers. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, as Mujeres de Maíz, we're always talking about the lineage and the heritage that we come from. Um, you know, we usually identify them as 1960s and 70s, 80s, 90s, um, more 60s, 70s, 80s, Chicanx, Latinx, indigenous writers, poets, and musicians. But, you know, it goes even way before that. Um, and even now, like, we are part of, like, a generation also. There's a new generation. And so it's really key for us to always say, like, before, because a lot of what's happening now is that we were able to do is as a result of those we came before. A lot of what people are able to do now all over social media is a result of a lot of the push working and like struggle that people before came, including at least in East LA, Mujeres de Maiz, um, you know, a lot of blood, sweat and tears that our ancestors and even we have, have done. So we're going to take some questions from um, our chat audience, our live stream audience. Um, Son Sonia Gutierrez coming out of San Marcos and the uh, oh, yeah. San Diego area, poet herself and also with the book and other profesora. She asked, Gris Munoz, when was your vision for writing a poetry and pose, prose collection born? You know, I actually um, have always been a bit of a literature snob uh, just growing up and being exposed to different works and a lot of them classical works because that's what they make brown kids read is a bunch of classical work. And, um, and so really, um, I really never imagined that I would be putting out a hybrid work. In fact, um, I kind of looked down on hybrid works. And when I would see a hybrid work, I would think, huh, well, maybe they didn't have enough material for a whole book or I would have like these and and really I, I was humbled I was humbled because um what ended up happening was is I was at the same time writing poetry short story um Spanish and English and and it was all just calling that it belonged together that it all belonged together and I was thinking this can't be so at some point I tried to put out uh, a, an all short story book or an all Spanish poetry book or just a poetry book. And every time I would look at these different editions of my work, they all seemed very incomplete. And I realized that what I was trying to do was describe who I am. Like Guadalupe Girl is, is me basically. And so everything, everything that goes into it, whether it's prose or poetry or in Spanish or in English, these are all the pieces that make up this mujer, right? This mujer. And that's really what I wanted to do was show the full picture of this mujer, the Guadalupe girl who is now a woman. And um, and so I, I, I messaged Michael Sedano, M. Sedano, and he is known as historically one of our, one of our greatest Chicano critics. Um, and so he's a maestro. And I messaged this maestro and I said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this whole thing. And he said, why don't you make it a hybrid? And I said, a hybrid? And he said, have you forgotten that Borderlands is a hybrid? And then I just like, then I just realized that I was playing into the idea of what I thought a book should be through colonized eyes and that um, Gloria Anzaldúa had written a hybrid and it has been one of our most treasured works uh, and we love it and we critique the hell out of it, but we love it. And, um, and so that's really where it all came to me that I, sh I could work on a hybrid. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, Moni, you had a, a question, correct? Yes, well, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who shared um, it was beautiful to see folks on um, commenting that they were reading along as you were sharing these, uh, some of your work. And I was like, that's so beautiful. And throughout, right? Like, oh, that's my favorite piece or this is my favorite piece. And so I just want to thank you for your work. Uh, specifically for me, the one that really stood out to me was um, Chingona and really what you shared after that. 
in terms of how sometimes it seems like easier to not be here and to decide not to exist in this physical realm um, versus, um, you know, going through that path. Um, but then recognizing like, okay, if I leave and then I'm going to return. Um, and so I thought that was really, really powerful. Um, and I really resonated with it a lot. So I wanted to say thank you for that, first of all. <laughs> um, and the question that I had uh, was, I know you, like for myself as well as a writer, like it can be really emotionally heavy to write. And so also the, the what you shared about they crushed up their, their bones and fed them to us. I was like, oh my goodness, like <laughs> I was shook. Sure. But basically, you know, like it's a very, um, powerful practice, but it can also be very emotionally heavy. And so my question to you was like, what have been some of the challenges that have come up for you when it comes to writing? And how do you kind of work through those heavy emotions that come up and that resurface while you're writing and while, um, yeah, and even sharing, right? When we're sharing, like we may not be in the same place, but I feel your energy, you know? And so um, yeah, that was my question. So one, thank you so much. And two, uh, how do you navigate, you know, the heaviness um, and some of the challenges that you experience with writing? You know what, when, when I first started, oh, thank you for your question. And um, thank you just so much for, for everything. I'm just grateful for you. Um, but one of the things that I, I do want to say is that as I've grown older, and when I started working on this book, um, well, when like, let's say beer run in the book is probably the earliest um, piece. I was maybe 22 when that happened, when beer run happened and I'm now 39 years old. And so it's been a trajectory for me um, as a writer. And during that time I became a mom, then I became a single mom and then I became a student and I was going to school full time um, and being, being a single mom and working with my mental illness. Um, which is depression and anxiety, right? And, and the possibility of being manic um, and um, being poor. And honestly, I, I, don't know, I don't know how I'm here, but I survived it. I think that you have to fight with everything you've got to hold on to this idea of being a writer because it is so against what we've been taught, especially as a first generation mujer, there was nobody in my family or, you know, that's privileged to have anybody to know an artist, to somebody to say you're an artist or this is what you do. I come from working class background. So there was nobody to teach me that, that I could be an artist or I could be a writer. And essentially, as I've gotten older, I've, I've watched many of my friends um, and schoolmates, colleagues um, have full careers. Um, they, they're homeowners. They, they have uh, many things that I don't actually, I'm still living in this apartment here in Sunset Heights. And I'm still really trying to live off of as little as possible because all I wanna do is write. And it's been really, really hard. And I'm, I've been a hot mess. I have failed classes. Um, I have failed every English class I probably took. I had to take it twice. Um, because going to school was really hard for me. And so it's just one of those things that um, you just have to grab onto by the neck. Like, I don't want to say a pit bull, but I just mean grab onto this dream and hold on to it because the world and everyone around you is going to try to shake it off of you. And so really survival is, is crucial in this desert, right? Um, just the way these plants are, are hardy, just the way that these agave, uh, they take very little water and they still fucking survive through the sun. That's how you have to be to survive being a woman writer, a woman of color writer, a Latinx writer. Thank you just so saying. much for sharing that. And thank you for your vulnerability as well. I think it's really beautiful to um, show that vulnerability and show what you don't see sometimes, right? When you see the book, the published book, but then it's like, what's, what happens, you know, behind that, right? And so thank you so much for sharing that. And I also wanted to end with, um, I know you all shared earlier in terms of, you know, the generations that came before you all um, that are now, you know, made that space for you all 
And so I just want to honor every single one of you all here because that's what you all are doing for me and many other um, mujeres. So thank you. And I will stop there before I cry. So Fer, take it over. <laughs> Our Moni, Moni Hurtado, aka the Femme Goddess, is also, we have like a whole generation of some of our uh, UCLA body of service learning interns. So she's one of the reps. We have Amber, all kinds of them that have come. We have some right now over the semesters, actually the quarters there at UCLA. So I want a big shout out to UCLA, the professors that are supporting Mujeres and Maiz by, um, and the students by connecting them with community organizations um, such as ours. So we're really amazed to have, you know, years of interns, um, not every quarter, but every so often. And um, it's really exciting to have that and connect in that way. So thank you so much to Moni and all of our interns over the year, last years. We are going to go with a couple more questions um, and then uh, just go from there. So first we have I like this one because I'm wearing the T and it's true, right? This t-shirt of Kuaulikwe, uh, it says Greece. This is from Diane Brinkman. Greece, can you talk about your inspirations for using Kuaulikwe as a central symbolic figure for your stories or poems or actually for the book cover, right? So let us know more about that. Well, there's a lot going on in there. Um, it's, it's actually kind of layered, but one of the main um, things that um, has to do with Guatlique, um is every single one of the short stories um, involves my mom in some way. And so in a lot of ways, um, when I'm connecting with Guatlique, um, I'm thinking I'm connecting with my mother's Mexico um, and her and, and, and the way that she sees her Mexicanness and kind of how I um, in some ways mythologize it, um, maybe romanticize it a little bit, and also um, well, in regard to my mom, right, there's that that kind of chasm between a first generation daughter and a Mexican born mother. And so um, there's a lot of like, mother ideas of motherhood, my own motherhood. Um, I, I become a single mom in the book, right? I'm a single mom. And so I just identified a lot of ways, not just ceremonially with the idea of Guatlique, who is, who is the mother, um, but my mother and being a mother and, and just kind of like, there was just a, a lot of different ways that, um, and, and this poem, the, the Guadalique girl poem, um, it kind of all goes back to that, and it's a short poem, and really the poem is just about um, uncovering um, that ancestral memory and, and even queerness as an ancestral memory, as something that was in us that was taken out. And so in the poem, What Liquid Girl, she's also um, kind of like discussing someone that she loves or a mujer that she's admiring but that, that queerness, that attraction is also something ancient. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gris. Um, so we're just gonna do, uh, I believe, I haven't seen again if there's any more in the chat, we've been cutting and pasting them and getting them ready for, for asking. So um, grismunoz.bigcartel.com, grismunoz.com. Right. We have been putting um, the information for all the different other uh, performers, Rios de la Luz, uh, Irene Lara Silva, and DJ Malavida. We've been putting their Instagrams, linking them on all our social media sites, as well as the YouTube um, chat. So this last question, uh, kind of a couple questions and one. Any projects on the horizon? Any tips for publishing and plans to travel after all of this happens, right? So. One person specifically, Denise Frausa, said Pip tips for publishing and any plans on traveling to do readings? Cuando ya está seguro viajar, te espero en mi casa en San Antonio or San Anto. So yes. tips yes. for publishing or projects on the horizon and how to get your book, por favor. Absolutely. Um, actually, during this time that I've been um, working on getting Quat Liquid Girl published because Quat Liquid Girl has been has been done for quite a while. I received an incredible um, commission and I've 
been working for almost three years on a biography of Fabian Devora, who is an LA artist and um, comes out of Homeboy Industries and has now a complete career on his own. So I'm writing his life story and um, it's daunting. It's been a difficult process. I've gone to LA several times and um, interviewed him, interviewed his family because it's really a story of, of um, addiction. Um, Fabian was um, addicted to drugs for many years. And so I realized at some point that if I was gonna tell the story of addiction, then it had to really be told through the lens of his entire family. And so I went in and went in and I sometimes make him very uncomfortable, but um, I have interviewed everyone in his family about the reality of um, his drug abuse. And so it's just been an incredible journey for me as a storyteller to kind of take that focus off of myself and start focusing on somebody else, a man, right? A man with a history of violence and how I'm going to write his story as a Chicana, as a feminist, and as a woman who is interested in stories that are redeeming. Now, Fabian's story is redeeming. And so I'm really excited about it. Um, there's big talk about this book. It's actually kind of under underneath the surface right now. The book is uh, called Cholot, uh, the biography of Fabian Devora. And it's told in first person. So in the book, Fabian is talking, but it's actually me that's writing and putting it all together using our stories and using um, our interviews. And um, there's talk that um, Father Greg Boyle is gonna be writing either the um, introduction or the afterword. And also Luis Rodriguez is going to be most likely in this book. So it's a huge project and it's coming up really soon because I'm on deadline. I'm actually way past my deadline. Uh, sorry, Fabian, I know I was supposed to call you uh, earlier. And, um, and so um, I'm working on that. And then I have another book that's actually halfway done. Um, it's called Sancha. And Sancha is amazing. Sancha is basically the novel version of Guadalupe Girl. And it tells all my secrets and all this cheese And it talks about my ceremonial journey and it talks about religion. And it's just a really crazy book. And it's really for all of us. And um, so be on the lookout for Cholot and Sancha. Oh, I can't wait to put Sancha out. Um, so thank you so much for asking that. And publishing tips would be just to work your ass off and stay open. I mean, build a community of writers, especially if you are not going to school for an MFA. Like me, I, I don't have an MFA. Um, it's really important that you hang out with, know what others are writing, know who's writing what in your city, um, go, to, go to poetry readings, take online workshops, read. I mean, really, really try to cultivate a community of writers. And there's a lot of us. So you can, you know, seek us out. And I think that's really where um, your work can start moving is through this community. Is that it? Thank you so much. So I was doing a little bit of work right now. If you see everybody's uh, pictures right now, you can see that everybody has their Instagram Instagram name, those who have it. And I'm also gonna um, change uh, Irene's to, uh, well, you could keep your full name and we're gonna maybe put the website there. So if you look at everybody's name right now, it says um, their Instas. I just wanted to make sure that people were able to see and follow people's Instagrams, follow their great work, their upcoming projects, just as she mentioned, uh, the memoir of Fab uh, Fabian Devora and so much more. Sancha, I remember when we um, remembered or you figured out the term spiritual Sancha and I have a picture of you in yes. the screen. <laughs> you were like, she got on the big screen in the FA. Oh it was like 15, 20 videos, the little screen made into one big screen. It was like the funniest thing. I wish I could share it right now, but I didn't get it ready. Um, but yes, she got on the big I'm always, screen. I'm always a spiritual Sancha. You know what? And then, and then, and then, you know, I'm, I get in trouble for it, you know, but I end up being a spiritual Sancha. And so that's kind of like something that, that we've talked about. Yeah. Chistosa. So, Chisto Six, our community, we're so thankful to have Gris Munoz um, sharing the poetry and information prose from Gris Munoz's new book, Squat Liquid Girl. Where can you get it? Grismunoz.bigcartel.com 
for the information to get the book if you haven't purchased it. If you're a librarian, if you're a cultural center, a community space, a school, this is where you want to get from the author um, directly. Is that correct? Tell us more about how they can get the book and your, any like special offers or like signatures. I think you had mentioned. Can you share? So if you'd like a signed book, um, you can you can message me. And now now I have that big cartel website, and you can find that off of my website, www.grismunoz.com, or you can. Um, go to the publisher direct from the publisher because we really we, we don't want to be supporting amazon as much as possible um so support the press flower song press flower song books.com i believe and you can also get the book through there and um the book is the book is um hopefully and you can ask your local bookstore for the book and yes it's on amazon but it won't be signed and um, someone else bought it through barnes and noble online stores so the book is already making its way out there Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gris. So grismunoz.bigcartel.com to purchase the book or grismunoz.com for the website for readings, bookings, virtual readings. You saw how she can still emote all this energy and all these other poets. Also, Rios de la Luz, thank you for joining us. Irene Lara Silva, thank you for joining us. DJ Malavida Cucucumbia, thank you for joining us. I want to unmute everybody if you or unmute yourselves if you hadn't done it. And I just want to um, give you all a little bit of chance to say hello or send a last shout out to Greece. Or, um, and also maybe one by one, give your Insta or website, please. Can uh, Rios go first? Everybody should be. Oh, and really quickly, can you also add your virtual tip jar as you go around so folks can support you and send you some energy through Dinerito? So <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure you include that as well. Okay. Rios? Yes. Um... So I just want to say again, thank you so much for having me, Gris, and congratulations. And I'm so excited to see where this takes you. And I'm so excited to continue reading your work and seeing you read your work. Um, I guess it, my, I guess I should talk about my handles. Uh, Instagram, it's just at Rio de la Luz. Um, if you want to give me some money, that's cool. Uh, I have Venmo, it's at Rio de la Luz también. Um, and then I have a little, a big cartel as well. It's uh, Interstellar Bruja, uh, interstellarbruja.bigcartel.com. Um, yeah, so that, I think that's it for me, so. Thank you, Rios. Uh, Irene Lara Silva, por favor, let us know your website or any way to get in contact with you if they'd like to hear, hear about your books other than just Googling you, please. So it's probably easiest to Google me. So if you just look up Irene Lara Silva, it goes to my website. Uh, you've got different possible books that I have in stock right now that I can send out signed orders uh, next week. So just let me know. Um, what PayPal and Zelle is uh, Irene Lara Silva at yahoo.com. Y'all can, can also email me at that address. And, um, and last, um, Chris, thank you so much for inviting me and felicidades on the book. And I am so glad I know you've been waiting a long time for this book. I'm so glad to see it. I'm so glad uh, to hear you reading from it. And I'm so glad that now as a community, we get to celebrate it with you. Thank Best. you so much, Irene. I love you. Aw, feeling the love through YouTube even, right? So um, let's see, DJ Malavida, Cucucumbia, can you let us know your Venmo or any way to get in touch with you if they wanna online? virtual party or in the future if they want to connect with you por favor dj malavida noemi hola hola probando dos tres 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 dos tres sí sí uh well, i want to start off with uh again gris muchísimas gracias por la invitación mujeres de maíz for using your platform um if you feel like uh, uh just to be transparent um all the virtual parties that i've been djing um, I've been using my privilege and um, kind of pa um, paying it forward. So I've been donating um, everything that I've been making through these virtual hangouts. Um, so if you feel like contributing to that, my Venmo is Malavida, M-A-L-A-V-D-A. -A -A um, if you want to follow me on Instagram to kind of kick it in some other type of virtual realm, <laughs> uh, it's going to be at Cucucumbia. 
It's C U C U C U M B I I A A. So it's actually right down here. That's me right there. Um, and again, just a, a big felicitaciones to Gris. Uh, it's been my absolute pleasure. Um, I'm looking forward to actually meeting in real life with most of y'all. Yes. And, you know, um, I'm all about connecting dots. So thank you again for building this beautiful community and this beautiful platform and for being inclusive in it. Um, muchísimas gracias. I uh, appreciate everybody on here and everybody tuning in. Y'all can always slip into my DMs if y'all want any like um, musical. Uh, I know a lot of people were asking for playlists. Um, I'm a little new to like the virtual worlds because I spin uh, vinyl, uh, but I'm more than happy to share my Spotify's and cosas así, like canciones. I try to play a little bit of cumbia from every region. And that's kind of why I like cumbia. Uh, every every region kind of has their own take on it. So yeah, if you have ever want to chop it up about music or anything like that, if you want to collaborate, uh, hit up my line again on Instagram, it's cucucumbia. Um, and again, if you want to contribute to any um, donations, uh, Venmo at Mala Vida, VDA, Mala Vida. Thank you again. And then thank you, Felicia, for moderating this beautiful event. Everybody looking fabulous, by the way. Thank you. I was muted. I was like, yeah, Sombrero Twins. I always have to, you know, you're pinning videos, unmuting, unpinning. It's it's a whole talk show thing here. It's it's super duper. Moni and I were like, we're sweating. The other day on the Instagram live, I did like four hours live for a shopping Saturday, which is happening this Saturday, May 2nd on Instagram live. And my mom texted me, you look hot. And I was like, thanks. And she was like, not like she meant hot, like Girl, put the air conditioning on, put the split and the fan on because you are hot. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, the poetry brought us to that level, brought the, brought the heat of all uh, uh, the poetas, brought the heat in so many ways through their palabra, through their energy, through the canto coming from the, you brought the Texas heat. I don't know if it was super hot over there, but usually it's that desert heat. You know, Gris on her book cover has that desert honey shirt. She's like, yes, making it happen. So yeah. one of those tip jars, tip, get that money to our poetry sisters, our poetry companieris, our DJ Manavidas, you know, femme labor should be not free. We should be giving this energy. Of course, we do it out of our heart. And we, Mujeres de Maíz has done that for 23 years. Um, if you want to donate to Mujeres Maíz, buy the book for Gris directly from her, Irene's um, books, also Rios de la Luz's books, DJ Manavilla's uh, chip jar. Please do that. Um, and just want to give out a shout out to everybody listening. Thank you so much. Take care. Buy those books. Support the fam labor. Any last couple of palabras? And then um, DJ Malavida, if you want to share some music, and we'll just end it there. I know it's like overtime, and we're just going with that energy. Unas palabritas o estás bien? Estoy bien. Okay, Gracias perfect. a todos. Oh, and I and I did just did want to just to say I wanted to thank el maestro Luis Urrea, Luis Alberto Urrea for being a light, for being el sol and writing an incredible foreword to this book. I would like to tattoo rock and roll curandera all over my body. Andale. Thank you. Can you share just closer about the pictures and tell us like 30 seconds about the about the visual artist? Oh. Oh, yes, absolutely. There's just too much going on. But this work has four exclusive illustrations by border artists, Los Dos, uh, Cristian Cárdenas and uh, Ramon. Oh, my God. Why can't I think of his name right now? And um, Cristian and Ramon are Los Dos, and they are um, working. They worked with me for almost four years um, on this book. This book has taken forever and it includes four very exclusive um, illustrations that are nowhere else that you can find uh, Los Dos's work and um, it has their bio in the back and you can find them at Los Dos Maintain Studio and they also have a website um, and just please uh, support, support uh, local work and we'll have t-shirts and we're going to have merch out soon too. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. So we're going to go out with um, 
some DJ Malavida Cucucumbia on our way out. Thank you so much for everybody joining us. Again, this is going to be our, this is live stream is going to be on our YouTube channel forever. So repost, let those students know, the community members, other artists and poets who might be inspired or need inspiration during this time. Thank you so much to everybody and uh, take it away, DJ Malavida. Muchas gracias a todas and todos. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Hey, 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 All 
right. So we're about to log off and stop doing our live stream for what liquid girl Rizunio. And right now you're listening to DJ Malavida. Thank you so much for being the DJ of the night. So patient and amazing. There you see the Venmo tip jar in the chat. Um, you see also the um, Instagram follow all the rest of the artists and co-hosts and poets. Thank you, Gris. Congratulations. Much love to Thank you. Yeah, much love to all of you. Thank you so much for sharing. And we're gonna sign off. Mujeresemais.com. It um, is our website. You can also donate there. We don't have a Venmo because yeah, we just want our individual cell phones out to have Venmo. So we don't have that, but we have a donate section there. Please buy the books, support all our zines, our t-shirts, all the items that are going to come out soon from our Mujeres and Maiz affiliates and members and poets and artists. And of course, in the upcoming, we have like four different events. So follow, go to our Instagram or go to... Uh, our Facebook, which it lists all the events. Our website currently doesn't have the information, but you can check out more info on Mujeres de Maíz or GrisMuñoz.com. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care and bless you. Adios. And Adios. we're out. Bye. Thank you so yeah. much, everybody. Bye-bye.